Good morning. We're from the Valparaiso School of Law. My name is Richard Bogdan. I'm a 3L there. I'm also a Navy veteran. I served on two ships out of San Diego, the USS Howard and the USS Peleliu. Um, My name is Louis Glenzak. I'm uh, in the uh, Marine Corps. I'm uh, in active ready reserves. I just completed OCS this summer, so be uh, heading back once I complete my degree here at Valpo Law. And just a quick introduction. I'm the president of the Military Veterans Law Association, and Louis is our treasurer this year. Uh, as you can see from the slide, we were established in 2012, or 2010 rather, I'm sorry, 2010, the year before I started law school. Uh, when I started, my mentor, Tony Ascona, was our president. He kind of groomed me, I felt, towards becoming the president of the, the MVLA when my third year came, came around. Uh, part of our bylaws is that you have to be part of the e-board for at least one year before you can take on the role as president, but you can join any of the other uh, vice president, treasurer, events coordinator, and such. Our mission is to establish and operate a veterans legal clinic focusing on veteran issues, uh, as well as there's a veterans court, treatment court that we have in Porter County. Um, additionally, we are trying to promote a cohesive uh, unit for military veterans to come together uh, our student group does not exclude non-veterans. Last year, our president was a civilian. So we encourage other people to come from the community, from the law school, to join and participate, knowing that we're here to help veterans' issues and affairs and get you know information out there so that anybody can help with veteran issues. Uh, I like the idea of, of a PTSD clinic. Uh, that's a, it's an outstanding objective that they have. We have a similar objective. Uh, that we've partnered with a, a dog training club. We'll get to that later on with uh, different activities that we do. Uh, our goals are to foster and support an academic environment. Uh, as law students, it's very, very rigorous uh, study, training, reading. There's no time, so we understand that it's a lot of time to be devoted to people making sure they keep their grades up so they don't get put on academic probation which part of our, our goals is to acquire study aids and materials to help prepare those students, their first year students, for the exams, such as flashcards, horn books that explain the law and are able to better advise the students, just another source that they get that information from besides just their teachers going to class, reading, outlines, and et cetera. So we wanna have study materials available for our veterans that they can use strictly for the veterans and not have to fight with the general uh, populace of the, of the student body to try to get these training materials. Additionally, we offer an annual Veterans Day 5K. Today, we're actually having our 5K in Valparaiso right now. So we're gonna hope to try to get there by the, by the end of that, that 5K. Our 5K goes towards a uh, charity that we established last year, which is Help a Vet Get a Pet, where all of our proceeds from the 5K go towards the adoption costs of a veteran looking for a companion animal. Now, in addition to that, we have paired up with the dog, a, a dog training group in Hebron that deals with PTSD training for the dog and the veteran. They bring their dog in, they do the training together so that anytime the dog senses something in the veteran, they're able to come over and you know, address their needs. Uh, also, service, service animal training that they do as well for the veterans. And all that's free to the veterans. So the Regular civilians, they pay the, the regular fees, but for veterans, they don't have to pay any of those training fees. And additionally, we'd like to reach out to other student veteran organizations in the Northwest Indiana region. We'd like to, we have been talking with several schools in the Northwest region about setting up a Northwest Indiana Veterans Alliance, where we'd come together, have meetings, pool our resources, make it available for all the different veterans, because at the law school, we have maybe 25 veterans that, that come to school, and the university on a whole, about 70 additional veterans that aren't uh, affiliated with the Military Veterans Law Association. Though we open our doors to the other side of the campus, as I'm sure every other student veteran organization knows, it's hard to get attendance up. Um, when I got out of the military, it wasn't a big thing. I love talking about being in the military, and I'd, I'd do it again. Uh, some of that slid back. There aren't as many people that are self-identifying which is fine, it's understandable, but still we want to reach out to those people to let them know that we're here for them, that they have an opportunity to, to come talk to us if they're struggling for any school reasons academically, 
that we're here for them, or just as friends, we're here as well. Uh, a little bit more about the campus culture. Valparaiso is located about 50 miles southeast of Chicago. It's 45 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic. Uh, again, we have 70 veterans on the campus. Um, the best part about veterans is that we are highly motivated. We like to get a job done. We finish it all the way through. Uh, again, we have a very solid infrastructure and support group on the campus. I know our Student Bar Association is very, very uh, happy with what we do. Uh, this year, we won the first ever, we were part of the first ever uh, Chicken Dance Award for the Indiana State, or yeah, for the Indiana State Bar. I know it's a funny name. The guy's really very nice. Um, they based it off of all the different uh, requirements that a campus has, fitness center, wellness center, and all the different activities that we do for mental and physical preparedness. Uh, again, some of our challenges are just trying to get out to veterans that they don't have time or want to be, be involved. Um, again, we want to encourage these veterans. We have upcoming uh, 2Ls that are going to be 3L students next year that we <coughs> have already in place for our leadership roles. So every year we look for new candidates. And I know in our new 1L class there are very, high, very highly motivated individuals. Here's a picture from uh, last year, uh, an event that we did with uh, local rescues and pet shelters for trying to get awareness out and helping our 5K for help a vet get a pet. Again, some of our, what we'd like to use this, this grant money for is to help to defray the cost for study materials for veterans. Check out, a, uh, the checkout system would be just for veterans so that they don't, again, they don't have to fight with other students. Uh, we'd like to take some of the grant money towards uh, a tutoring position for one of the upperclassmen that did well in the first year core studies for, for that so that there's someone that did well in the class that understands it that can help go through with the student. Um, again, and then focusing on our 5K, anything left going towards our Help a Vet Get a Pet program, be it marketing, getting our information out to local runners, to the other side of campus, local schools, etc. And I'll turn the rest over to Louis here. All right, our budget, we got a bunch of numbers up here. Uh, we get approval from S the Student Bar Association, the SBA is what we call it. It's basically the student government for a law school. And we apply every year. The cycle got changed this year where you apply each semester for funding. So uh, right now, uh, as we talked about our one-year grant cycle, we're, we'd be asking for uh, 1500 to go to study materials and textbooks. Our overall goal is to eventually get a room at the law school just for veterans for study area with uh, some couches, um, maybe a microwave, a coffee pot, an area for just the veterans to collect and study together. Uh, what a lot of people uh, don't realize, I know undergrad textbooks are expensive, law school textbooks are even more expensive. We got books that are about 1,000 to 2,000 pages long, which could be anywhere between almost up to five to 700 bucks per textbook. So while they're spending that kind of money on the textbook, they're not spending the money on the study materials. So it'd be nice to get them the supplemental materials. Uh, $300 to go towards the tutors. Uh, $200, we'd be looking to advertise the 5K. Right now, we have a hard time getting funding to actually put articles in a newspaper, some sort of small advertising with that, or maybe just get a quick segment on the radio uh, to increase awareness on that. Uh, here's our current budget uh, from the school. $25 we get to advertise on our bulletin board. $20 for supplies for our student organizational fair, which is how we recruit. We also supply packets to incoming veterans on resources in the area, as well as different benefits they get on campus they may not know about. We get $50 for meetings for uh, food, uh, and uh, $150 we got for our 5K. So we actually were under, we went under budget for our 5K. We only spent 100 of that. That covered all the food, uh, the police payment to close down roads and all that. So we're pretty proud that we're actually under budget for that one. Our prospective budget in the spring would be $350 for a panel discussion. We're looking at bringing veterans from the area to several law school students that, you know, bring someone who has the legal background who's a veteran, but also some other options as well. We have a lot of non-traditional options out there for law school students who may not decide to actually go into practicing, but to show veterans what they can also do with their degree. We're also doing a veterans claims assistance. Uh, we're bringing attorneys in the area as well as students. We're going to be able to get trained and then also assist veterans get their claims. So it's a good way to give back to the community, 
It also helps students. We're required before graduating to get pro bono hours in. We have to give 40 hours of pro bono service. So, <laughs> time's up. So, I have to blame Rich on that one. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yes, with um, the questions that our judges, I'm sure, will form so that you can address some of those. Let me just go forward. You're on the wrong way. I'm going to the logo. Okay. The second page. I do have a question. Um, I know you, earlier you said it, your mentor was a non veteran. No, he was a veteran. He was a veteran. Lieutenant in the Navy. Um, at some point, I, I, did you mention that one of your... Our past like, president from okay. last year was a non-veteran. Is, is there something in the bylaws? And, and the reason I ask, I'm glad that you're being inclusive rather than exclusive. Um, and you're bringing in uh, non-veterans, dependents, um, of course, the veterans themselves. Have you thought about, and I, I don't know how you want to put this, but it, I see most of the SVOs or um, throughout the country in general, um, and SVAs in general, um, tend to have most of the post officers to be all, or I should say your, your your chapter officers or your organization officers as veterans. Is there a reason why it was a non-veteran rather than a veteran, or does it does it make an impact? Does it not make an impact? Do people uh, there, care or not care that they are or not? I don't think there's real a reason. We're actually moving towards trying to be more inclusive with yep. us civilians. We're currently working on changing our constitution, whereas the current president doesn't actually have to have been on the e-board prior to to actually run. Uh, we feel like that might also solve some of our uh, leadership issues with, because it's hard to get first-year law students involved their first semester. Uh, they're very flooded, very scared first semester of law school. For those who aren't aware, your grade is based on one test at the end of the semester. You have no midterms, no homework, nothing. So it's all based on that one final. So they're really focused that first semester until they actually see it's not as bad as they actually thought. So. That's one of the reasons why we're looking at changing it to get more involvement on the e-board. Um, she was, um, our last year's president uh, is engaged to a uh, Marine Corps veteran. She's so dependent. she's also passionate about it. That's where that interest came in and why she wanted to get involved with the program. And, and I will say as a, as a good thing, and I, again, it's, it's coming from the DC area. It's, it's, we tend to have that 30,000 foot. We don't really know all the time what's going on in the rest of the world. So I will say, um, I know you guys wasn't able to get to it before, but um, what you guys are doing, it's, it's a great service, um, and what you're providing with all the legal fees and helping veterans um, kind of navigate and, and helping them with um, that particular skill sets that otherwise sometimes the veterans will have to obtain a financial burden to even be able to access the benefit, I mean the benefit. So for that, I do say thank you and keep up the good work with that particular initiative that you have going on. Thank you, yes. There's another, there's an electronic post, an e-post that we'd like to set up in the Northwest Indiana region as well with all the other different student veteran groups to, you know, just have a resource where they can go like Legion, they can go to the DAV website, have all these links and resources available to them that we're trying to get the ball rolling with all the different SVOs in Northwest Indiana. It's hard because there's always a lot of turnover every, with us at least every two to three years with even the undergrad four to five years depending on how long they stay, if they go to graduate school, you know, those turnover rates. So reaching out to these other SVOs to in include this e-post, um, tentatively we'd like to name it after Christopher Patterson, who's a VU alum, or went to VU and uh, gave his life in Afghanistan. So we'd like to honorarily name it after, uh, after him for his service to Indiana. Uh, we've also done a bunch of other Great, great activities and things for the community. We try to continue to reach out to the community with our resources. This past 9-11, we put up a display in between the football stadium and the fitness center for 9-11. We planted about 3,000 flags with, Louis will go to the picture here, uh, with other student, vet or other student groups, not just veteran groups, but we worked with the Valpo Dems, we worked with the Valpo uh, Republicans, and I uh, believe did Wolsa help out as well, and, yeah. and the two ROTC units were on board. The, we have an Air Force and Army ROTC unit on VU's undergrad side. So we, get, we have a lot of support from the school and the organizations because they like what we do, and then we also turn around and help them out with uh, women's shelters for, for the WALSA group and any other drive that they have going on that, that they would need help from veterans. What is your current membership right now? You say you have 25 
students in the law school, but 70 across kind of Valpo in general. What is your current enrollment? One of our, to, to kind of sidebar for a second, that's one of our challenges actually we didn't get to talk about is we finally just got the list after about a year of trying to get it from the undergrad side of their veterans because we wanted to establish a bridge so the law school and the undergrad veterans can work together and create more of a bigger umbrella group. And uh, we just got that, which we're glad, but it was about a year of just heckling the other side to get that. But uh, our current membership is probably around 15 or so. Yeah. Um, so 15 of the 25 in just the law school? Correct. Yes. Okay. And we, we can't speak on the undergrad side because um, we're just going to start reaching out to them now. Do they have their own SVO on not the Valpo side? Not okay. that I know so it's of, just no. within the law school? That's correct. Okay. Now, with what I liked about your goals is there weren't very many of them and they were very tangible. You can do them, you can. They're measurable, they're very tangible, which I really liked. And I also appreciated the, the kind of the, the tutoring uh, piece of it. So being able to take what you've learned and, and give back. And I think sometimes when you're, you only have 15 members, you only have 25 across the board. So you, you can't boil the ocean with what you're doing. So I, I really appreciated just the kind of the concise um, goals that you had because that is measurable and the lessons learned, you can build upon that. That's sustainable um, as well going forward. So I think that was, that was a really good piece um, to, um, to your, um, uh, kind of the, the goals in your presentation. Where I think you have some opportunities, and maybe you didn't get to it, but was around some of the partnerships or local businesses that you can um, kind of group up with. I mean, similar to Ball State, they had reached out to some of the community. I'm wondering what have you done from kind of a community aspect, kind of reaching out to other local businesses. Everybody loves free food, right? So how can you get some th some freebies back to get more to the walking wounded and things like that? So can you talk yeah, a little bit about? Not a problem. So these are some of our strategic partners we identified: uh, Northwest Indiana Veterans, American Legion. Uh, we're currently working with them to uh, establish that Northwest Indiana Umbrella Group, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they come talk to our members, so you know, allow them to get access to potential members for their groups as well. Uh, we've offered to help them. We haven't been asked yet, but we've offered to help them go down to Indianapolis to do lobbying for uh, student issues as well. Uh, Folds of Honor, Quilts of Valor, uh, we worked with them to uh, get the, um, the Quilts of Valor to come to the chapel at uh, Valparaiso University. Valparaiso University is part of Lutheran um, Church, is actually has the largest Lutheran church in the United States. So uh, we worked with them to get the quilts um, to be up at the church for, for a couple of days. So allowed the community to come see that. So we provided that venue. Uh, Porter County Veterans Treatment Court, our advisor, Joe Baruffi, is very active with that. And uh, their part that we're working with to establish our overall missions to get a law clinic involved. Uh, in case you're unfamiliar with that, law schools have different clinics to provide free legal services to different aspects of the community, such as criminal defense, civil, um, domestic violence. And uh, our main goal, our overarching goal right now is to get a veterans clinic established to start working with the, the veterans treatment court. Um, we've been active with that. Um, judge Gent, who is uh, the judge at the veterans tre treatment court there, has been very helpful with that. Uh, we actually, keeping our fingers crossed, we might actually get the main foundation paperwork done for that this year. Uh, the main thing, again, with that is getting the school to pony up the money to pay for an actual attorney to be on staff for that time period. Uh, the Law School Fitness Club, we partner with them for, uh, for the 5K. We give back to them because they do also a 5K for Make-A-Wish Foundation in the spring. So they help out and volunteer for ours, and we provide them with volunteers for theirs. Uh, same with Student Animal Legal Defense Fund. They work with us for the help of that get a pet since that the overarching similar mission. We just provide resources when they have meetings and um, larger groups. Uh, we talked about Women's Law Association. Career Planning Center, we work with them to bring in uh, recruiters for uh, JAG opportunities. Um, seeing that, that's what I'm doing right now with the Marine Corps. I'm able to bring in my recruiting officer to come in, as well as uh, we got another student who's an uh, Army going with JAG, so she's able to work with them to bring her recruiting officer in to provide those opportunities for students. Uh, two by two rescue is a big asset for us. They're a no-kill shelter in Northwest Indiana, and they lower their adoption fee for veterans. 
and we provide them with um, free advertising at our 5K uh, with volunteers as well to help out throughout the year. And Dunes Dog Training is the one who provides the P free PTSD training. So we just, uh, we just started that with them. So we're looking for how they could use our help. Mainly, they want us just to get the word out to veterans uh, that they're getting free training. So we're able to spread that word for them. And one additional thing, thank you again for the uh, Military Families Resource Institute for choosing Valparaiso in April to, to host the convention, where we will be reaching out to more employers than the Northwest region of Indiana to help bring them in and see what we can do more with them and build a better relationship with those local uh, employers in that area. So it's something that we have in the works, the ball is rolling on this. So we definitely are looking to pair up with more community members. And do one more thing, I'm sorry. The, the veterans uh, claims training we're doing, as I quickly stated, it's uh, open to attorneys and students. Uh, as students, we can't go to court for the veterans, but the attorneys can. So we're gonna be able to provide them with free training, which they could also get what's called a CLE credit for, hopefully. Uh, attorneys have to get continuing education in order to keep their license. So that would also allow those attorneys in the area opportunity to get that credit done for the year by getting this free training and also give back to the community. Um, so I, I just want to add to what um, Jane said about your goals and objectives. What I really like about them is they are specific to your student veteran population. You've identified a need, whether it's um, you know assistance with the GI, GI Bill benefits process where you guys have a specific skill set and can leverage a skill set to address that, or it's um, the tutoring service, like you said, based on the experience of a first-year law student, um, and additionally with the cost of textbooks. So I think um, that is critical to your success, that you've identified the, the needs um, of your student veterans um, and then are addressing your goals and objectives around those. And I will say continue to do so. Um, it is very easy to expand and want to address every need that you think a student veteran can have. Um, but just as businesses and um, you know, nonprofit organizations have to keep in mind mission creep. Um, we would like to do a lot of everything, but we need to be good um, at some particular things um, and at first. And I think that that is what you've done, and I think you can build upon that. Um, and I think that in itself is going to help you with your, your membership. They're going to identify quickly the, the need that you fill, um, and I think your base will grow from there. So, um, again, a great job on that. Can you speak to more of your, I guess, recruitment strategy? What methods are you using? Do you work with your school to identify veterans when they come in? Um, how are you working through that challenge? Our law school's open with that. We actually get all the contact info from the law school admissions on the veteran name, contact, and that's how we put together a welcome aboard packet, as, as we call it. Uh, provides all the restaurants, daycare, all those facilities, as well as um, if there's a discount for veterans. So any sort of resource they might need. It provides all the contact information for the financial um, on campus that works with the veterans. So we put all that together for them to give them when they come to uh, the organization fair. Uh, the undergrad, we just got their contact info. So that was, like I was saying, that was hard to uh, get that. And a lot of that was due to current privacy laws. But uh, we're um, now brainstorming on how to get them involved. We're gonna be sending out, since we have their email, uh, email letting them know who we are, uh, kind of establish a meeting in the spring once we all get back from uh, Christmas break to try to get them involved. And uh, we, we hold, um, we have a chapel break, it's called, uh, at, at law school. It's a 20 to 30 minute break. And that's when we typically hold our meetings because usually everyone's on campus during that time. So instead of trying to get them to come back later in the afternoon or evening, they're currently there for just a 20 minute break in between class. So to get them just to quickly give them an update on what's going on, we do that once or twice um, a semester or uh, as needed with, uh, with events going on. And at those events, we, you know, we try to entice people to, to come by you know, giving, offering food and refreshments. I mean, that's usually how you get people to come, just offer them something free, and they'll, they'll show up. Whether or not they continue with it, that's, that's the balls in their court then. We just make the information available to them. I, I see you have a lot of strategic partners, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they all have a wide ranging in scope um, of, of different pop parts of the population in and out of your area. Um, how are you leveraging that to assist you um, in your advertising, marketing, or just pushing out what you're doing, highlighting what you're doing, um, 
and are you leveraging them to help you in that in that front as well as I, I can see you you're, you're working together on other issues, but are you leveraging that on that front? Oh, we absolutely are. Some of the partners we didn't include because it would have been too many. Where um, we have contact info for all the what well, most of the veterans organizations at Northwest Indiana, if I'm correct. Yes. As well as a lot of the shelters in Northwest Indiana. So they provided free advertising for us to all their members. Um, they sent out the flyer uh, for the 5K, uh, put it up in their halls, um, the shelter, just so uh, other people who are involved with either the veterans or uh, who are interested in uh, <coughs> align that interest as well. Um, they also, the veterans groups have been informing their members as well as this, us working to establish that larger Northwest Indiana coalition group. So they've been very active, a lot of veterans groups in that area, they want to see the younger veterans get involved. So they've been a great resource with that. Uh, potentially, you know, if we get to the point providing us with free space to have meetings in their halls in that aspect as well. Additionally, part of our every, every year, our annual budget, we each student organization takes in account what activities they're going to do with other student organizations. So we budget in money for advertisement for other student organizations, such as the running club for their ambulance chase. So we, we provide in our budget and also in their budgets, they provide you know, resources that they would use towards any of the, the food and refreshments or advertising and such, any, any things like those uh, the, critical areas. The memorial, for example, change the slide, but uh, the memorial, uh, we worked with a the Republicans and the Democrats, where they would, since uh, we have limited funding with the Student Bar Association, they would get the funding, whereas we would provide them with enough volunteers to actually put up the flags, since uh, we didn't have about 3,000 flags at all at that time period. So, I mean, we're constantly learning each year that we're going through our budgeting proposals. We're learning with the different student organizations that are available to us, as well as the outside resources in the community, what works, who to go talk to, um, what kind of speakers we want to bring into Valparaiso. Uh, we've brought in the Army uh, Court of Appeals and they had a hearing in front of our student body. So we'd like to continue activities like that that get people involved in wanting to do possibly the JAG Corps like Louis is involved with in the Marines. Um, it's a great opportunity for other students just to see a different aspect of the law and what they're interested in. So they give them, hey, I don't have to go be a public defender. I don't have to go be a prosecutor somewhere. I can put in my packet to become a JAG officer or go put in a packet to become an FBI, you know, doing the legal rebel side. Like you can do it a lot with, a J with your JD besides just being a lawyer. So we want to open up opportunities and bring in people that do non-traditional things with, with their ac academic career. Yes, just one. Um, as you look to expand to, um, to undergraduate student veterans, I just want to caution you that that's going to be very challenging. Um, and, and I'm sure you guys are already aware with the, what you're currently facing. Um, undergraduate students have a whole different, um, I guess, set of challenges they face. And so maybe your role could possibly be more in finding the, the, the next maybe leadership that could take on that challenge at the undergraduate level. Um, uh, those that maybe can be more focused on specifically the undergraduate um, obstacles and challenges. Just, just a recommendation, um, and you could be the, the mentors. I just think that, again, as, as you're wor working through it now um, with the services and programs you want to provide, um, this is a, another population that I think you know, needs to have its own focus and, and emphasis, and so maybe that's a role for you. Definitely, thank you. Okay, um, any questions from the audience? Anybody have anything you really want to ask? Okay, great gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you, Jamie.